I'm a bit excited, <laughs> and uh, this is because I have uh, this kind of badge with these two sides. I'm uh, um, organize, uh, organizing this uh, conference, so I'm mostly running around uh, at the desk area, um, and now I'm switching to this to this side. Um, I'm going to speak about the Foster um, project. Um, yeah, Foster, this is um, facilitate open science training for European research, and this is why it's in this session about skills and um, practices. Um, I'm standing here for my other colleagues, Nancy and David Boyle from the project. Um, I very briefly will introduce um, something about the project. I will concentrate on the training um, aspect, and if I have time in the end, and Niels is so kind to uh, give me a sign if it's uh, long enough, um, I can show you also something online about the training portal, some more technical stuff. Um, the project was planned for two years. It's now running two and a half years. We finished in July. Um, there are three part 13 partners. Um, the project lead is with the University of Minho. And when we applied for the project, there were 27 other um, organizations who, um, which signed for the, um, to support the project. So we had quite of a network to, um, to start and to work with during, during the two and a half years. Um, we had three main areas, and um, you don't have to read all the, um, the small uh, um, letters. Um, just briefly, we um, wanted to deliver training courses. Um, our main task in the beginning was to identify training resources, so what's already there, um, to collect these resources, um, put them in one place, analyze what's there, um, and to enrich, so see what's missing, to fill the gaps, and to work with, with all these resources. And then finally, to create a training portal, where we put then most of these resources and create new stuff and have put some, obviously, um, functionality around um, to be a real portal. Um, what we were doing in the very beginning after we identified most of the existing training resources was to go through it and to see um, how it can be loose, used as learning material. So what could be the learning questions, what could be the um, the perspective of the learners. So if we say, if we want to train, um, like, like a scenario, a librarian wants to train a, a young researcher about, like this um, example here, open science evaluation, there could be a subtopic, identify at metrics and its impact, and there could be some leading questions. So we um, went through all the resources and identified these learning objectives, questions that could be useful for a learner to identify if the material is interesting for them or not. So we have quite long lists that goes on and on. <laughs> That's just two examples um, where you can um, look through the material and make it useful for, for learning and for teaching purposes. Uh, yeah, you see the link in, in the bottom area here um, in this project folder in the deliverables. There's this very long um, list of learning objectives. Another outcome of the project was a training toolkit. Um, as I said, the delivering of trainings was the second and, and the, really the biggest um, task and the biggest um, many activities. And I have here my colleague from the project, Irina Kutschma, who was mainly involved in this, sitting in the front row, <laughs> uh, mainly involved in, in running these trainings. And we um, gave the training organizers some help. So they um, want to organize an open science training. Um, what should they observe? And we had some um, documents to, to guide them through this. I, I don't list all of this, just an, as an example. Could be different formats. We didn't specify what kind of format. If it's a face-to-face -face training, there were webinars. There were all kinds of different training formats and also suitable for different audiences. You see here some examples of the audience that we targeted the training to. Um, that's the, the task of the project was to train young researchers 
um, but we thought there are many researchers in Europe, we cannot reach all of them. So we also go for multipliers, and that's why second priority was administrators um, of uh, European projects and librarians as a very um, strong um, stakeholder here. And also, yeah, research project managers and if we could reach them, we had another like sister project, Pasteur 4A, where the policymakers and funders were involved in this project and from time to time uh, the two projects met and um, exchanged experiences. So we had also some reach in this area. Um, here's a little picture of the training sessions that we did in the two years, 2014 and 2015. Um, we did some two calls for training, so we had some money in the project to call um, institutions, organizations willing to run trainings. Um, they could apply for some money and then they, we, we selected, after some criteria, we selected the training sessions. And that was a result in nearly all European countries. There are just quite a few missing, just, just very few missing. Um, so what we had in our application for the project um, was a plan, what we want to do. We want to fund 10 training programs per year, each year, so it makes 20 programs. There was a budget of 10,000 euro in each um, project, that's 100,000 per year, um, 200,000 euro in our budget. Um, we were quite overwhelmed as a result of the calls for training the number of applications that we received and also the amount of things that we can, could do with our money because the result was in 2014 we already had 17 applications that we could fund. So we were aiming for 10, we had many more, 45 um, applications. We could fund 17 because they didn't use all the 10,000 euro. So we had less money per project. 2015, we even had 24 um, successful proposals and they could even fund more events out of their initiatives. So they, they made series of like 10 webinars or um, four um, installments of their trainings in different cities, uh, networks of universities that work together and um, they had the same training in each university. Um, so we could fund many more training events than we initially thought. And we had some money left in 2016, so we had nine more projects in this year. And the end result, you can see, we had 50 trainings, 116 training events, for the same amount of money, 200,000 euro, and that made 1,700 euro each. And, yeah. Um, brings me to some conclusions that I will show you in a few minutes. Um, I go into more detail about the training audience. We had very small events, we had very big events, from nine participants to 480. There was big lecture rooms, um, and naturally that was different kinds of, there were very intense workshops with few people, and there were like overview, introduction um, type of trainings with a whole lecture room of full of students. In total we had more than 4,600 participants and this is not the numbers of 2016 yet. Um, and as I said before, the trainer-trainer train -train approach reached quite a wide audience instead of just training students because all those trainers, in, in some applications they already promised this and most institutions also doing this now to multiply the training. So the librarians who went to the trainings took the training material and are now preparing trainings for their students and giving this now on a regular basis. Some statistics, I don't want to take much time on this. Um, by audience, you can see really the biggest part is researchers and students. Quite a large part is librarians and repository managers. And then we had some policy makers, funders, research administration. And we had 3% publishers they were not our aim, but they managed to get into our trainings, which is quite nice, I think. Um, by topics, it's 
even smaller. I hope you can read a little bit of it. Um, we started with open access. That was the largest part in the beginning, in the first year. But then it was very soon uh, clear that it will be open data and research data management, which is more interesting, which is a newer topic, the topic that most people don't know anything about it and also don't know that the European Commission cares about it um, and yeah, that they really very quickly have to learn how it works. And so that was then very soon quite a large part of our training. Um, and then there's a small, smaller area of open science, something in the, in the um, direction of this morning's keynote, like open notebook science and this kind of thing, more innovative things. Few graphs. This is trainings by country. I said, yes, not any country that I right now know that we did not have a training, but there must be some because I think it's 25 here in this slide. The findings. This is the main part of the presentation. Um, what people did when they applied for our um, training calls, they took the foster call as a starting point, but if they were not selected for funding, they sometimes, or some of them, carried out the training anyway. So we made them produce a training without giving them any money, <laughs> which is a nice result. Um, the funding was with lower amount of money. We thought 10,000 euro would be nice to have a really nice good training. Um, but they were applying for sometimes as low as like 100, 150 or 1,000 euro. Um, what they wanted to do was to use the foster branding and to use the, the reach that the foster project had um, to um, promote their trainings. Also, they use the competencies in our project, so they ask us for trainers, they ask us for advice to um, use our network um, to provide a better training. Um, some, some projects missed all our deadlines. So for the first year they were too late, for the second year they didn't really make it. Um, but they were still using the, the publicity that we are doing with the project um, and they like hopped on the wave and used this for promoting their training and having um, talking about the, the topic open science um, was very successful for them to get um, participants. Um, many institutions use the material that either they develop themselves or other institutions developed in the training um, to just copy them and use them in their own trainings which was the idea of the project, naturally. Um, what we found was that it was very good to have the first call to build awareness for the topic, um, to talk, make people talk about open science, um, to establish the brand of Foster, um, and then in the second call to have more specific things. So as I said, we identified the, the existing training material, and then we were able to identify um, which areas we don't have material and we would rather focus on this in the second year with promoting those trainings. Um, and in this way the, topic, the topics changed from open access in the first year to really um, open science and open data in the second year. Um, we didn't have any specific um, uh, topics that we wanted to address. Um, it was completely horizontal and the um, communities that applied for trainings could preferably attach them to their local um, conferences and so we could really um, have specific topics and specific target audience without being any um, specific experts in, in these different areas. So we had a horizontal approach but the trainings were very specific in, in, time, in parts. Um, yes, as you saw the coverage of audiences, the feedback I would just very quickly go through. Training was between good and excellent, especially with focus on the speakers. Um, we had a wide range of topics. Um, there was some, uh, or one point especially that was at the same time good and bad. Um, so people said the training was good for an overview, but they would like to have also specific more in-depth discussion. So it's quite a 
interesting thing to do this on, at the same time, <laughs> to give people an overview and then go into very um, deep discussions with them. So probably um, there will be two different kinds of trainings. So a follow-up training, which several institutions are doing. Um, what we have seen, what was our expectation in the beginning, but it was proved throughout the project, there is no one size fits at all, so we cannot have a European training for all the scientists. That is just not impossible. Not possible. Um, so we used our training experts, local trainers, to combine what's really important for people um, in the different countries, in the different communities, in the different science areas. What they stressed was that it's very good to have the foster portal as infrastructure. They could announce trainings, they could all put all their material there, so they don't have to provide all this by themselves if they don't have it. Some recommendations. Um, what we found really hard was to talk to graduate schools. Um, they were interested, they were talking to us, but it's, and they were um, willing to um, do some trainings to also the, the managers of the graduate schools, they went to our trainings, but to really implement it in curricula is very, very difficult. Um, and maybe there must be a Foster 2 project also to, to achieve this. Um, what would be useful is um, cooperate with research integrity trainings, which is another pillar also for the European Commission, um, to focus on, on this area, to put also some money there. Um, but these two training approaches could work together. And the training doesn't have to be called open science training to be an open science training, or research integrity training to be this. It can be, have any title and combine both things. Every yeah, infrastructure, I think that's natural, should have a training project, a training component. And it would be really good to start with this now existing network of trainers um, to build a real network of training hubs, to, be, to have centers where these expertise is located, that they work very closely together. Um, yeah. Same thing with open science. So this was about the trainings. Um, I just want to show you the portal. I think the time is not <laughs> anymore to, to really go onto the portal and try to or show you how to um, work with it. Just want to talk about it. Um, what you can find there is the resources that we identified. So many, many things. I would not say all things because there are things appearing every day probably, but all things that we could identify, we put on this portal. We sort it, um, put it in this different um, <coughs> areas. Actually, for doing this, we developed this open science taxonomy, um, which was not um, an aim in itself, but it was, we just needed a tool to organize the material. And here you see the URL with this um, image, to have it a bit bigger. Um, and yeah, you can follow the graph and click on any um, branch and then see what, what material is available there. Um, it's also an e-learning platform. It's not just the resources. Um, it's not just running the courses and, and announcing that there's a new training in some country, but it's also an e-learning platform. This was the last activity that we started and it's still going on. Um, and there are new courses which we develop out of this material. So we look through the material, also the, all the presentations that people from this 116 training events gave, and we combined some of the most useful that we found into, tra into e-learning trainings. And here it is, work in progress. And what you even can do is suggest a course and create your own course. So if you're up to creating a course about any subtopic of open science, then you could just go there, you create your login, and then you can design your course, work with the material that is there, you can just link it, or you can put your own material and you can use the portal for running your trainings. Would look like this. You have a short introduction and you have the different lessons. And afterwards you can put some quizzes, there's some functionality that helps you building a really good training. That's it, I hope. <laughs>
Thank you, Astrid. Any questions? So, um, thank you for the presentation. I would like to know what will happen to all the material you compiled after the project ends. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, we are still sitting over the sustainability uh, concept. Um, as we said, we have a, quite a network of people that we work together and also the 27 institutions that were supporting us from the beginning and many um, projects and initiatives that since then started and we were closely working with them and we are uh, agreeing to, to work together so that they use the matrini, uh, training material, put new training material, we link our portal to them. The portal will continue to run, this is secured. Um, so, and we hope to have maybe other ideas for project building on this. Any other question? Well, it doesn't seem, and you took my question, so <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Astrid. Thank you.